The duel can easily be understood if viewed narrowly. Hamilton insulted Burr at a dinner party in Albany in February of 1804, calling him dangerous. An in-law at the event published an account of Hamilton's remarks in the New York Evening Post, the paper founded by Hamilton just three years before. And eventually, Burr happened across it. At that point, he was the sitting vice president, Burr being Burr. He was the sitting vice president with two illegitimate children he was constantly being dunned to support. But Jefferson had dumped him as his VP for the next election. He was still stung over, uh, um, Jefferson was, still stung over Burr's treatment of him in the famous endless election of 1800, when it took 36 ballots in the House of Representatives to affirm what the country had intended, that Jefferson be president and not Burr. The whole time, Burr didn't even deign to come to Washington, but remained incommunicado in Albany for the marriage of his daughter, Theodosia. And despite the anxieties of the country over what would happen next, never once revealed a public word of his intentions regarding the highest office in the land. If Jefferson had been a dueling man, he might have taken a shot at Burr after that. And I can't blame him. To cover the ignominy of being dumped, Burr had sought to be elected governor of New York, but Hamilton had politicked against him, and despite an early advantage, Burr, Burr lost by the widest margin in the short history of gubernatorial elections in the state. When he saw that Hamilton called him dangerous, it smarted. He called out Hamilton, demanding to know if he had used the term and what he meant by it. Worse, what did the in-law, a certain Dr. Cooper, mean when he said that he could relate still more despicable comments of Mr. Hamilton regarding Mr. Burr? Hamilton was in a bind. He, couldn't, he could scarcely deny he'd used the word dangerous or that he'd meant anything other than he did uh, um, indeed consider Burr dangerous, for he'd been saying so in every election cycle since 1792, at mounting volume until he had become rather shrill on the subject. As for despicable, he tried to wriggle away, saying that there is despicable and despicable, and who's to say? A little like asking what the meaning of is is. Right? Now, um, Burr would have none of it. They would resolve their differences at Weehawken. A duel is, in an odd way, like a romantic courtship in reverse. An uncoupling, you might say. It has its etiquette, too. It just goes the other way. If a marriage declaration requires elaborate preliminaries, so does a duel to the death. There's conversation, more serious conversation, very serious conversation, the determination of interest by intermediaries, a proclamation, assent, choice of location for the event, seconds, consider them best men, and ritualized preparations. The guns add a little something, but the intimacy is there. The two parties are not side by side at the altar, but facing each other at just ten paces, close enough to see into each other's eyes, to discern any gratifying hints of distress. Bodies sideways like fences, fencers to minimize exposure. And then, instead of the question, do you take the shout, present, which could be the last word that one of them would ever hear, or both. Bang, bang, or in this case, intriguingly, bang, bang. 